In Murrindindi Shire, it's business as unusual. And right now, our local businesses need you. Every dollar you spend locally helps business owners support their family, other businesses and you. Shop local. Shop Dindi. Visit dindidirectory.com.au. Welcome to Dindi Live, presented by Murrindindi Shire Council. Simulcast on UGFM in your local area. Dindi Live would like to introduce Jimmy Hocking. Break my heart, you treated me like a dog. I'll never be that fool again. I'll never be that fool again. Yeah, but I wanna have it one more time. So tell me where, tell me where. We've seen the sun come up, we've seen the sun go down. You never told me why You never treat me like a friend Never treat me like a friend Yeah, but I wanna have you one more time so Tell me where, tell me where Oh, Lord Well, we've seen the sun go up We've seen the sun go down you never told me why You never treat me like a friend Never treat me like a friend Yeah, but I wanna have you one more time So tell me where, tell me where You see, I know your feet are cold They're reaching like a fool I see what's going on, it's the same over again and again. The same again and again and again and again and again. Yeah, but I want to have it one more time. So tell me when, tell me when. Yeah, I want to have it one more time. So tell me when, tell me when. Yeah, I wanna have you one more time, so please tell me where and tell me when. Oh, yeah. Thank you and welcome. Jimmy Hocking at your service. I'm playing you a couple of blues songs here, and uh, I don't know if you know anything about the blues, but I'll tell you one thing. To be a great blues man, or woman, you need to have one thing. And that, of course, is a totally crap love life. I can assure you right now, people, that nobody wants to hear your happy ass blues songs. I know that I'm right, say that I'm wrong. Kiss me goodnight, but you're already gone. Trouble, baby. Keeping my hands off of you. It's a sign of the times. You're wearing that face. You run hot and cold, and I run round the place. With trouble, baby. Keeping my hands off of you. Know that it's true. It's written right here, right across my face. And I get so blue without you. So don't leave me for love out in space. Cause I want you to love me the same way I love you. Same way, baby. It's true. It's written right here, right across. 
across my face And I get so blue without you So only in me floating down in space So I want you to love me In the same way that I love you folk catalogue from back in the day and uh, I still love to play the folk festivals when they, uh, they let me. So the original Jimmy the Human catalogue was uh, made up of songs from my early cafe experiences which was uh, from the mid 80s when probably most of the audience weren't even born. Or maybe not. But it's not you can hear the old Jimmy Hocking in this song. I wrote the song I guess in the very early 80s. It's a bit of a hippie vibe too I guess. A little strange, but as a boy, I thought I knew There was some of me on all these plastic toys And as I watched from my room, through my window I heard a voice come to me from the afternoon And it said, if you can't get blood from a stone And you feel like you're ever alone And you can't put your trust in a friend just live with peace and live with hope and live with love and the answer will come to you from above those days in school I played a fool that made me smile but a joker would stay with me for quite a while and yet inside 11 one as worlds collide I still heard the voice from when I was young and it said if you can't get blood from a stone And you feel like you're ever alone And you can't put your trust in a friend Just live with peace and live with hope And live with love And the answer will come to you from above And with the answer in your heart Nothing will tear you apart But if it's always coming down I lay on the floor Till I don't hear a sound My eyes are dry Just like a man But I cut my chin As I crawl through the emotional garbage can I tried to grow Tried to be fair And understand My gifts will go with me everywhere So if you can't get blood from a stone And you feel like you're ever alone And you can't put your trust in a friend Just live with peace And live with hope And live with love And the answer Will come to you from above Could you hear a little hippie in there somewhere? <laughs> Let's play this. We're getting into a scary territory now. You know, Jimmy the Human and Spectre 7 album, now turning back, turned 30 years old this year. So uh, here's a little uh, acoustic moment from that rock record. Which I've played all over the world now to, uh, to quizzical faces. I can see you're different to me. Your skin looks soft to feel. Mine is made of steel. You don't realize your body can entice. And you put me in a state that I can't communicate. I am a robot man. I am what you program inside a metal shell. I 
was assembled on a line in 2099 when science hit a peak. But still, I cannot speak. You look into my eyes, expressionless and wide. Oh, can't you understand that I long to be a man? Inside my metal shell, I can feel as well. I am what you program. I am a robot. Up next, we speak to botanical embroiderer Lynn Stone about her work. I'm Lynn Stone and I make three-dimensional models of Australian native plants using white thread, wire and textile dyes and my sewing machines. This is a piece of Eucalyptus Caesar or Silver Princess. You've probably seen some around. It's very showy and very lovely. And I made that all from white thread and wire. How did the process of botanical embroidery first start? Way back in the mid-90s, I was doing a course out and designed for embroidery at Boxall TAFE. And as part of the second year, the tutor was talking us up for our major project. And I don't know where it came from, but into my head popped the idea of a branch of gum blossoms. And that's all I've done ever since. I got hooked on it. I, I had a native garden and all of that, so I modelled it and I tried it. And it's experiment and experiment, and you never see the bits that don't work. And everybody thinks I'm really clever, but they, it's just slog, slog. So 25 years of doing it, I think I finally hit the straps. I make Now I make eucalypt blossoms, wattles, hakea, and callistamins. And each one has had its own problems. Callistamins took me the 25 years to work out. I tried making them all sorts of different ways, but I finally got it right. The first ones I made were just on the sewing machine. I'd put some organza in a hoop and scribble, basically. It's like, it's like drawing, except when you're drawing, you wiggle your pencil and the paper stays still. But when you're embroidering, you move the hoop and the needle stays still. And it goes around and it builds up stitching and you can um, build up all sorts of shapes and wonderful things and then cut them out. These days, there's computerised machines. And uh, so I can make life easy for myself and get a much more accurate result by using the computerised machines. And as my previous career was as a computer consultant, it seems fairly natural for me to do that. Where does the inspiration for creating native plants come from? Not long after I finished the course at Box Hill TAFE, I sold my computer business and sold my house in Melbourne, bought a coaster bus and fitted it out and went off to travel and see Australia for a couple of years. And that was a perfect time for getting all the basic information from all the various eucalypts that grow around Australia. Everything I make, I have collected myself from the tree in person. And so I've got Darwin woolly butts, I've got stuff that grows up in the Kimberley and, and the Pilbara and all sorts of things. And I'm very proud of the fact that I, I've got them all myself. And that was wonderful. I really liked the travelling. And instead of the two years I was going to spend, I'd spent 10 and halfway through that time, my friend said, why don't you buy a place in Mary's or so you've got somewhere to, as a base when you get, eventually settle down. So I did that and now I live in Marysville. Can you explain a little about your process? The flowers, are, uh, the, the leaves are made from white rayon machine embroidery thread and they're stitched out onto organza. 
starts off or starts off with a layer of monofilament to give it some body and stiffness and then stitching over top layer upon layer more layers I stitch some wire in and then dye it and stitch over carefully over the wire so by the end of it I've got these ones have been dyed and they're ready to have the stem thread stitched over top when that's done I cut them out they're a bit furry around the outside because I just rough cut them so then I get a soldering iron wipe the soldering iron down the sides and that seals it all off nice and neat and there we have a leaf and that's all built up just from the white thread and wire the wire is nickel chromium which I discovered in a shop in Hanoi one day um, and being nickel and chromium it's very flexible and there's nothing in it that rusts so this was the smallest roll they'd sell me what I do there is I get some get some wire and put it in my special twisting tool which I've made at great expense from an electrical clip and a screwdriver bit with some araldite in between and with that I can put it in the drill And there I have the wire twisted up ready to start put a stem into one of those. To make the flowers I get fine polyester thread which is brighter and stiffer than the rayon, dye it to the colour that I want to use and get my big automated machine to stitch out a very wide pretty much satin stitch then the rayon thread on the base to build it up then cut around that side and this fabric is water soluble originally um, originally developed for the hospital laundry bags and so once I've got that I can what that the base fabric will just rinse away and I see I'm starting to get a flower then it just needs wire for the stems and some stamens uh, pistols which are just made with thread and some white glue dyed up to the right colour. So when I'm ready to put one together, a piece together, I have all the various bits. I've got leaves that have been dyed and the stem stitched over and the stem part wound. And then I have the flowers which I wind together into bunches how many goes in a bunch depends on the species and then I get all together and start to wind and just winding over with some fine thread to put it all together and then I get some soft rayon thread thick thread to cover that winding with and I start to get a piece. This is a lemon flowered gum which grows oh, a bit this side of Kalgoorlie. What have been the most challenging species to recreate? To make a wattle blossom. You need wire for a stem. And then you need the fluffy stuff and this is nylon carpet fibre that I've dyed yellow. I can't get my finger. Yeah. 
Now I'll pop that between the bits of wire. Give him a haircut. Then I need to tease out the and fluff up the fibres using a possibly recognisable close to comb. <laughs> and there we have a water blossom. Now for the piece that I made for the National Botanic Gardens in Canberra, I only have to do that another 150 times and I'm right. The Callistamon set a particular challenge because each little flower has five little petals that are very fine and curved and it took me years to work out how to do them and also to get thread fine enough that they didn't look like clumpy lumps. But I finally got it and I'm quite happy with my callistamon. Another flower that presented a particular challenge is the pincushion hakia. First one I made, all that stuff in the middle was just some fine thread that I knitted on a knitting machine and unravelled. But I knew that wasn't quite right because what it should have each stamen there has the four little and when I finally got really technical good automated sewing machine and some really fine thread I could finally make a pincushion hake here that I was happy with. That the whole process is actually an exercise in problem solving working out how to do how to make it how to make thread behave like a plant and it, it results in embroidery, but it, um, it's not just straight embroidery, it's problem solving. I totally made all these processes up in my head for years of experimenting. And my friends keep telling me that when I go under the bus, nobody's going to know how I did it. So after years of nagging, I finally wrote a book about how I do it with lots of photographs and stuff, which is for sale at the Visitor Centre in Marysville. Thank you everyone for listening and I hope you've enjoyed finding out how I make my flowers. You can find more on my website or my Facebook page. I hope you enjoy your evening. Thanks to Jimmy Hocking and Lynn Stone. And thanks to you for listening and supporting local. Would you or your organisation like to be featured on our program? To register your interest, head over to murrindindi.vic.gov.au slash dindylive. Dindy Live, bringing the arts to you. In Murrindindi Shire, it's business as unusual. And right now, our local businesses need you. Every dollar you spend locally helps business owners support their family, other businesses and you. Shop local, shop Dindy. Visit dindydirectory.com.au.